Welcome to the city, Mastermind City. Hi, I'm Faye Chapel, And I'm Stacey Maynard. Join us for a vibrant, inspiring, and uplifting master talk as we focus on how you can make a lasting impact on a global scale. Because the truth is, we're here because we want you to win. So are you ready to surround yourself with success because you're in the right place? Welcome to the city. This is probably the number one thing that I ever get asked anywhere I go. Um, and um, it's that's what people are looking at, especially now, right? In the days yeah. of COVID and people are home and they're going, what can I do to supplement my income? Everyone hears about side hustles and all that stuff, right? So, so I want to go back about mm, 20 years or so. I think it was. <laughs> and this was before... Um, Oh my God, before even WordPress, I think. <laughs> anyway, so I was um, I was working in corporate and I also am a feng shui master. Most people don't know that. And I um, I, could, I t- used to teach feng shui, to, and not just to my friends, right? And so I used to help them do their houses and stuff. And then their friends of their friends started asking me for help. And then their friends of their friends of the friends. And I'm like, I got a corporate job. I can't really do this. So I started writing a newsletter uh, once a month didn't even know what I was doing because really there was nothing out there, but I did the best I could with some email stuff that I could find. And then I was, that was getting out of hand. So I wrote um, some books, some workshop books, some PDF eBooks. And I, before the advent of Canva, I think I probably did it in word. And, um, and I found a commerce cart called e junkie. Wow. Was five- Way back. <laughs> Five dollars a month is what they charge, and you could people could pay the five dollars and download your book. And I thought this is a great way to, and not because I wanted to make money, but I just couldn't figure out how else to get to these people. So I put it up there, and I remember the first month, and I made sixty dollars, and I'm like, Yay! oh my god, <laughs> all those people downloaded my book. I think I was charging ten bucks or twenty bucks. I can't even remember. But um, so, anyways, back in the day, the reason I did it was to reach more people because they were asking me questions, right? And that's really what we're talking about. It, it's all about um, what you have as a skill set, your existing skill or knowledge, and using that to be able to teach online, right? They teach online. So whether it's to impact more people, to create scale, right? So you create scale, you make more money. Um, it's whatever your, your um, thinking is about it, um, it's easier than you think. What Do you remember your first product, Stacey? Oh my goodness. I think I did. I think I did a challenge as my first product. Uh, it just because I figured that way it would force me to do multiple. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know. I think I don't, I'm trying to age myself and trying to figure out how long ago yeah. I was really focused on this, but it was way before all of the Kajabis were around and all of that. Yeah. And I was trying desperately to figure out, you know, how to duct tape things because I didn't just want to put it on YouTube and sell it and give them a link. I wanted it so that it was a video product. They could purchase it. They could buy it. I just wanted some sort of system. And it was hard back then to figure all that out. Yeah. And now it's easy. (laughs) That's the whole thing. It's pretty easy. So I think, you know, so I want to go through a little bit of what's involved and what you need to think about, because the first question, the holdback is always the same, right? I don't know the tech. I'm not an expert. Um, is it's not gonna, you know, why would people want to listen to me? There's so many products the same out there already. And, you know, so there's there's a list of reasons why people say they can't do products online. Usually it's the tech is the the, the but, yeah. most challenging. Um, here's the interesting thing about like we talk about podcasting, that's the same thing with product creation. Um, everyone jumps into they need tech, they need tech. But the truth is, what really is your product first? Because if you don't have a product, it really is irrelevant which platform you don't use. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, there's eliminating all of the others doesn't matter if you don't have an idea or a concept what you actually want to do. Right. So, so really when I, when I teach product creation, I teach a whole course, we're actually launching another one with on point. Those of you who are on this, who are on point mentors, you're going to get this free. It starts August 10th and it's, it's essentially a six week program where we're going to create your entire product and have it ready to sell by the end of the six weeks. 
Yeah. So, um, so stay tuned for that for you guys. But anyways, um, it is an eight week process is or an eight module, eight step, whatever you want to call it, um, in order to really do your product. And that's how I look at it. So I say eight weeks for some people, it's eight days. If you're going to do it every day for eight days, you can create it too. And some people it says eight steps might take eight months, depending on how much time you devote to it, right? So really the first thing before you even start is understanding, okay, online programs are there. They're ready for all of you. You have the opportunity to take your skills and abilities and knowledge and put them in there. Now the question is, what's your idea? So number one step is your ideation, right? What's your idea? What is the transformation? And we always go back to, it's really simple. The goal or the transformation, transformation at the end of your course or online. So something has to happen. So my, um, the transformation for you guys today in this live training is to understand the eight steps. So at least you have the outline and framework. So you know what you need to do going forward. That's what you need to do with your ideas. So if you want to teach something, what is the transformation from the person that starts from day one, whether it's your book, your course, your program, your video, whatever it is, what is their transformation? So I know a lot of you guys are going, well, why are you going all the way, way to this and you're not even talking about eBooks or whatever? Because it starts with your idea, <laughs> right? Everything. You have to have an idea. So that's your ideation, that's step number one. So write down your all the things that you believe you can teach and then circle the ones that you like and then go out and do a survey amongst your followers, amongst your friends and family and figure out which one sticks, which one do they say, oh, I would love to learn that. Like we do here in the group, we ask you guys all the time, what well, you guys want us to teach, <laughs> right? And that's what we end up doing. So that's number one. Number two, step two is goal setting. So goal setting is really, why are you sell, setting goals? Well, simple. What do you want to do with this? What's your goal? Do you want to, do you want to make a hundred thousand dollars? Do you want to make $50? Do you want to make a million dollars? What's your goal? Do you want to sell, you know, 10 programs? Do you want to be on stages? Do you want to be global? If you don't know why you're doing this, then it's really hard to achieve the goal, right? So right now, I think my first one, I skipped those first two. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm now I'm a little bit worried about how many I skipped. I'm going to do all that now. But now I'm thinking, I wonder how many I actually did the first time. Because the first one, I definitely, I mean, I had an idea, but I definitely skipped over what they were going to get out of it. I was yeah. just, it was literally a, like a, a regurgitation of information. I just wanted to yeah. kind of put stuff out there because I could. Goal, didn't have one. All right, yeah. let's go. Let's it's, keep going. All, it's all about your transformation. So remember, if you're going to start at A and you're going to, Z or Z, depending on where you're watching from. <laughs> um, you, where is that? That person's going to start from here and end up here. So what does that end up look like? Right. Be very, very clear and focused and conscientious. So that's number one. Number two is your goal setting. What do you want to do? So for most people, they want to do it to add more income. That's number one. It might not be yours, but that's the number one goal. So if they say, you know, I'd like to make $5,000 extra each month, that's important as we get to the business of math. That's important to understand your goal. So that's number two. Number three, so you've got your idea, you got your goal. So now you know your idea is already valid because you tested it, right? You went, did your survey, you asked your friends. So you know it's valid. So now we have to start building up a list, right? We build up a list before we have the program because if you've already done the program in the course, what's the point? Who are you going to sell to if you have no list? What are you looking at, Stacey? Yep, didn't do that one either. <laughs> <laughs> Fascinated by how little I knew back then. <laughs> so the key is the list is more important than the product. Remember this. So if you are, who, who, who ever goes on Kickstarter? Everyone go, ever goes on Kickstarter? So what does Kickstarter do? They have an idea, right? They know what they want to do but they need a list first. They need people to buy it in advance essentially so they can make it. So that's what you wanna do. You wanna get a list so that you can sell to people before you spend your time creating something that might not sell, right? And so Colin is very happy about the math concept. Apparently he's excited when you get to that point because you know, numbers are everywhere. Well, we're not drilling down to a lot of math today, <laughs> but it's there. So the list, the list build is simple. First, you put all your friends and family and everybody you know in your list. You ask them first, but that's like key. Even if there's 10 people, put them in your list because you know what? 
you feel better when you at least have a few people on your list. <laughs> I think the first person on my list was like my mother. Exactly. Exactly. So okay. that's fine. So how do you build that list? The, the list is built with a lead magnet. Remember we talked about that. We yeah. did training on lead magnets a couple of weeks ago. So what you do is you build a lead magnet that has something to do with what you're going to eventually sell. Make sense? Yeah. So Allison saying that step scares me. I'm not sure which step. Um, either the step number. Allison. Yeah. So so keep going, and I'll. Uh, okay. So, so one. Okay, following along, right? Ideation, right? What was number two? Goal, Goal. setting. Three was list building, right? It yeah. was really essentially trying to create your audience, right? How do you do list building? Through a lead magnet, that's still number three. <laughs> and then number four is more of calling stuff, which is pricing. <laughs> so, so pricing, why are we doing pricing now? You're still going, well, I haven't even created the program. I understand. But now you're gonna go back to your goal. And what was your goal? If your goal is $5,000, so we now need to know to figure out what kind of product we're going to price to have $5,000. There's a lot of different products to sell. There is an ebook that you might sell for anywhere from seven to $27. There's a small little tripwire program that you might sell from 27 or seven to $37, right? There's a low entry program at 97. There's a medium entry program at 497. There's a 997. There's coaching. There's masterminds. There's everything. But you can't look at the opportunities until you know what you want to make, right? And Allison is just suggesting that um, I know this is probably later, but she's saying, do you need to know the price so that you can sell it before it's created? Absolutely. That's why it's this is the order we're doing it in. So the problem that most people make is they do their course, they create a course. And then the first question I get asked as a coach is what should I sell it for? <laughs> like, well, my question back is, well, what do you want to make? Right? Because people, here's the thing about pricing. People will spend more. And we talked about this on other things. People will spend more because they believe the value is better right? So I'm like that. I will buy, we talked about wine the other day. My expectation is a hundred dollar bottle of wine is worth a hundred dollars, right? And so it'll taste like, better. Right. I don't want to buy a $7 bottle of wine because I, I just think in my brain that it's not going to be good. So if I have two programs and they're both called the same thing and one is 97 and one is seven, you know, which one I'm going to buy? I'm going to buy the $97 nice. program because my my belief is there's more value in it. So no matter what you guys say, it is proven there are studies. Everyone believes that a higher price point is a better product. So if some of you are like, well, I've seen ones that are great at $7. Okay, that's fine. Yours will be better. That's all there is to it. You have to believe in your program. So before you, so if, for example, you're saying to yourself, you know, I need a high ticket item has to be 997. I mean, 997. That's different thinking when you go about making your uh, product, right? So now that you know what your numbers are, you're like, okay, if I want to price it at 997, that means it should at least include eight or six or eight modules, maybe some coaching calls, maybe some check sheets, because you need to add value. If you said to yourself, it's a cute little thing, I just want to get, you know, to more people and I, I'm going to charge $27. Well, $27 is probably, you know, a 30 minute or one hour video and that's it. Nothing more than that. So again, it's really important to understand your motivation and your math, right? Maybe Colin can do um, can do a um, a training on math, right? Oh, Colin, what do you think? Cost concepts. <laughs> yeah. So so and so in this in this module when we do my, when we go through the whole product creation course, this is this takes a while because what we do is we look at all the different ways. So your one idea, how it can be a nine ninety seven program, a four ninety seven program, a seventeen dollar download. We look at all those opportunities and the way you take one product idea and you can make six products out of it, which is kind of cool, right? So That's now awesome. we've got idea, goal, list, pricing. So what comes next, everyone? Plan. Product creation? No, product creation? Nah, we're not there yet. We already have everything else. What do we need? 
We need a sales page because we want to sell the product before we make it. Right? We yeah. want to make you. <laughs> so we're going to create a sales page, a landing page, whatever you guys want to call it. Um, and you're going to create a page, right? So you're going to create a sales page. This is where tech comes in, right? <laughs> so there's lots of different opportunities to do sales pages. There's free there is um, paid, there is anything in between because it depends on what you're looking for. For those of you who are already on WordPress, you can make a page. For those of you who are looking at like a Kajabi, you can do Kajabi. It's more expensive. Why? Because there's lots of bells and whistles. There's also really great uh, things like Podia, Thinkific, Teachable, uh, my new favorite, GrooveFunnels, which is we're, we're excited to be working on soon. If you haven't seen that training, go to fayhasafunnel.com <laughs> and watch that funnel training. And then you'll also get a link to Groove Pages there. It's a really unique new one that's coming um, that'll be full blown in the summer. We'll do lots at the end of the summer. Stacey and I are going to do lots of training on that one. So just keep your eyes open for it. So anyway, so you need a sales page. Why? Because what you want to do is you want to create interest from your list so that they will pre-order your product. So you will, let's, for example, it's a, it's a full blown 497 or 197 pro program. You're going to have your sales page. You're going to list everything that's included in it. You're going to have all your key bullets. And then you're going to have either buy it and we launch. If it was today, it might say, you know, grab the program, you know, pre-order at this discounted price because we launch live August 15th, August 30th, right. whatever you want to say. Right. Or you can say join the wait list um, if they don't want to order it yet. But whatever you do, you want to make sure you start selling, pre-selling, and that's how everyone in the industry does it. You pre-sell your product before you've even created it. Make sense? That's crazy. Awesome. I'm in. <laughs> so you've got it, right? So you've got your idea, you've priced it, you got your sales page, you're, you're ready to go. So now we actually create the product. Right. So now you've done all this pre work and now you're going to create the product. So what's happening because you've got everything. Now the machine is going on its own, right? Your sales page is there. You're, you're able to post for those of you lucky enough to have a social media manager. They will post for you. You'll be able to push it out, push it out, push it out. And in the background, start creating the course. So for those of you who might have, let's say you have four modules, your first time, the first time you deliver it. So we'll talk about it tech and delivery, but your first time you're delivering it, if there's four modules, my recommendation to you is you deliver it one a week for four weeks. Why do we do that? Anyone want to brownie points, put your hand up. Hmm. Let me think. Um, number one, it keeps them engaged. Um, number two, it gives them time to do the homework. And they'll sometimes I know I've uh, done this where I will get a lot of information all at once and I'll skip ahead to the fun stuff. Yeah. Even though I know some of the beginning stuff is actually really important to do. So if it's dripped out, it forces me to do that work. Right. And how about as a creator? <clears throat> well, as a, as a creator, that's even better because <laughs> I don't need to have all four modules done. I just need to have the first one done and I just need to stay ahead of them. Right. So the beauty of this system is if you have four modules, remember, we're not talking about an ebook, but we're talking about actual <clears> online <throat> course. If you have four modules and somebody starts. So, for example, um, August 10th, we have our product creation course in on point ready to go. So my I've already created it. But if I hadn't created it, if I hadn't created it, I wouldn't even have to do anything until the week before the week before I create the first module. So when everyone logs in, the module's ready. So as they're doing week one, I create week two. And then the next week they log in and week two is there. So you don't have to have everything finished. I prefer people to do it this way. Why? Because it forces you onto a deadline. Because a lot of people might have eight modules and they will take a year to write them because they don't have a deadline. So that's interesting because that was going to be one of my questions because um, I've had lots of conversations with people who feel the exact opposite where they want to have all the modules recorded, all the information done. They want to get those videos created so that their product is complete. Then they will go ahead and promote it, build the sales page 
and start selling it. But then when it starts, they can kind of sit back and let it run. Right. I prefer to do, I, <clears throat> I've said this, this before, I need that time pressure. Right. Well, and, and the, the truth is when you have a deadline and pressure, you create better um, and you are much, much more organized and productive because you're on that time frame, right? right? So here's the thing though. You said something, Stacey, you said they prefer to sit back. Yeah, no, no. The work starts after you launch. So you guys understand, <laughs> like that's when you start promoting and things. It's not like you don't just get to sit back and, and you know, and watch everybody buy your product. No, no, that's step one of actually launching. So once we do the course creation, and so let's get back, let's step back a bit on the course creation. So again, we're talking about a module course, which means yeah. that you, and we've told you some of the pieces to look at Podia, Thinkific, uh, Teachable, mm -hmm. Kajabi, Kartra, Lead Fund. Uh, click, click. Can I ask a question? Yes. What's a module? Okay, so a module is your training. So there is, so course creation in itself is, um, I like to call it a bit of a science um, because I've developed a system where it's a very simple flow for people to follow. So it's it's like anything, you're, you, you, there is a system to get to the end of the road, right? So you start simply with um, the introduction and then each module is a piece or a chunk of training that moves them down the road to completion, right? So you need to be singularly focused on each module. So it should be able to stand alone, right? But each module builds on the other until you get to the final, right? So number one might be the introduction. Number two might be the pre-work, how to set up. Remember, that's exactly, remember the eight things that I'm showing you are modules. So when I said step one, that's a module. Ideation is a module. Step two, does you guys remember already? Goal setting. <laughs> so goal setting was a module. Three was list building. Each one of those are concepts that can stand on their own. So if I gave you my module on goal setting, you would be able to understand it and complete it as is on goal setting. But as you add and layer one on top of the other, on top of the other, you get to the final, right? And that's exactly how you teach anything. You teach your children how to do things. It's baby steps, right? And each time you add one on top of the other, on top of the other, eventually they learn how to do everything. So it's the same thing. So in terms of delivery, um, here's the thing that we want to talk about. We talked about the platforms you can use, right? There's lots of them and they're all different price points and they're all a little different based on what you need and what you want. So for us, the reason I like GrooveFunnels so much, the new, like I love Kajabi and that's what we're on, but GrooveFunnels, I love the aspect of all the additional things that can be added on to, um, the regular platform. So right. I think it's a steal right now. Um, but anyways, there's all these other ones, but here's the thing. If you're saying, I don't want to buy anything right now because I'm not so sure that I'm going to be able to really do this, you don't need to. You just need to record some videos. And here's the thing. If somebody wants to sign up, you might have four different videos. You know what you can do? You can put them onto YouTube privately. You can put them and then you can email your, your clients, the people that purchase your product every week and send them the private link and they can watch it right on YouTube. So there are so many ways you can deliver it for free, right? For free. A lot of courses are still delivered in PDF format. They're yeah. still delivered in challenges, challenges. A lot of challenges are done either on an email challenge, right? So you yeah. get a, a, or a lot of them now are in the Facebook groups. And you guys, for those of you who came on to, um, our first very first training, which was the workshop on how to change your expertise into coaching. Um, we did it. Our first two are right in the Facebook group. So yeah, you a, can lot add people, a lot of people do those challenges. A lot of people are doing summits on Facebook. Um, yeah. They'll just do Facebook live. And the only people that have access to the group are people who have paid to get in. Right. I know a lot of people who use YouTube as well. So there's lots of options. If you lots of options. And, and you know what, at the very least, uh, a, a PDF ebook, you don't even need special software. You could, well, you can use Canva for free. We already told you about Canva. You can put together an ebook and you can just sell it for $27 and people can just download it. 
if you did that, all you would have to do is put it, is add it right into a free service. You don't really have to worry about anything. You could use your MailChimp. Your, you could use a, a cart that only charges 2%, right? You, there's so many different options for you to do, or you can just put it on, um, on uh, MailChimp and use PayPal and you could, or an e-transfer, they can e-transfer you directly. There's nothing, there's no limitation here. So don't think we're trying to get you to go out and spend like, you know, a hundred dollars or $500 a month. There is no reason to, yeah. unless you want all the bells and whistles, right? So, yeah, I think my first challenge, I just literally uh, typed it out in the body of emails. Right. And that was as simple as it got. Yeah. So, so of course to. creation is really, it's a, it's a very um, step-by-step approach. So for those of you who um, have a lot of uh, knowledge, but you're not really sure how to do it, for you, I would suggest doing um, a very um, structured uh, learning on how to do the course in its entirety. Mm -hmm. So it really is so that you'll get the best effect, right? So that you learn the strategies of building over and over. For some of you, what you could do simply is do a one hour masterclass talking to the camera for an hour, going through your PowerPoint, going through your keynote. Same thing, as long as that's set up as, a, as the same flow and delivery, it's the same effect. So there is no difference whether you, if I did a product creation, my course, right, which is full six weeks and it goes through all the eight modules, that's $9.97. If I ask you to come to a workshop live, right, individually, it'll be a different price, but I'll create the same stuff. I'm telling you right now in this hour free, the steps involved. So I'm not going in depth because I only have this, this time, but what I'm, it's exactly the same information. If I was going to write a book, each module would be a chapter yeah right and that's and so for some of you you'll notice that some people write ebooks and they have programs so their ebook on amazon is whatever 24 dollars, and their program is 800 dollars, and it's the same information yeah exactly the same the difference is these people who spend the 800 are interested in that type of delivery and people generally who spend money, who spend a lot of money, will commit to doing the program. If the program only, if the book only costs them twenty-seven dollars, it's highly unlikely that they're going to go through and commit to doing that. If they did spend eight hundred, they're going to commit to it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, so that's course creation. So, um, let's go through the last two steps, and then you guys, we can you can ask anything you want as we go backwards. So, after your course creation, right? So you've got almost everything done, right? And now you are going to launch. That's your next step. Okay. Launching the strategy too. <laughs> so launching is it depends on what you want to do. Um, what we call VIP launch, which is essentially what I just told you. So you're going to email your list. You're going to announce a pre um, pre registration so that they can come buy your course, be able to go through it. And, um, and at the end of it, here's the beauty of it at the end of the launch. Um, and at the end of the creation, after that, you'll go into a more of an evergreen launch and an evergreen launch will be able to, you'll be able to buy it, you know, um, at will, unless that's not your strategy. Yeah. So your launch, you can also create only, only do it, you know, three or four times a year where you want to make sure because you add, you know, group co coaching calls or whatever into it, but a launch strategy. I remember I said, you know, you finish your course. Now the work takes place because now you got to launch, which means posting and sharing and getting people involved and thinking about affiliates and doing all of that stuff to make people interested in your course. Right? So I'm giving you full blown. Don't get scared because you don't have to go this big. Again, you can do a, a, an ebook, but the information is exactly the same. And if you want to create a launch, it still has to be the same. You still have to get out there. People have to know you, whether it's Facebook ads, targeting, whatever you need. There are lots of different strategies to do a launch, but that's the seventh real step in the process. And then the eighth is post launch. So it is over delivering, adding extra value, 
whatever you want to do um, to make sure that everyone has loved the experience. So you might actually surprise people with a bonus training, surprise them with group calls, surprise them with hot seats, things that they will go, oh my God, this is, this is even better than I expected because look at all this value coming in. Make sense? How's that for a roadmap? You guys are uh, following it a little bit? <laughs> So it's a great roadmap. I think the biggest um, or the most common question that I get is really drilling down into the modules. I think people get overwhelmed when they think about how to create that module. So what is your favorite ways to consume information? So, again, um, everyone learns differently. So you can do video as we're doing here and we're, we're this is called talking heads because you can see our heads and they talk. <laughs> <laughs> this is a talking head video. The other one is, which is more of what I prefer, which is um, a slideshow. So it's basically a keynote that you narrate. So um, very simple for those of you who have keynote, which is easier than PowerPoint, but if you have PowerPoint, it does it too. So yeah, they can, both, I was just going to say PowerPoint does exactly the same thing. Yeah. So you create your slideshow of information. So let's say you're doing module one, which is basically an introduction to what you're going to teach. You create your slideshow, you narrate it, and Keynote allows you to narrate, and then you hit file export, and it exports to a movie file, a video file, and that's it. So that's one. So now you've got your video chunk. Okay, that's one. Now you take the video chunk and you strip out the audio, which don't get crazy because there's these cute little apps that are called video converter. And, and so you t throw your video in and it pops out as an audio, pops out as an MP3. You don't need how to, don't need how to, don't yeah. need to know how to do anything. So now you've got a video and you've got an audio. Now you can take that same video, pop it into another program like Tammy, which is dirt cheap. It's 25 cents per minute and you now get a transcript. So you can take that or you can take that full transcript and create a PDF or remember you narrated your whole module. So if you actually wrote it out on the, on the um, speaker, speaker notes, then you can take that and make a PDF as well. So now you have video audio and you have a transcript, you have readable. So you have wow. three different ways to, um, have people to access it. You can do one or you can do all three. For me, if you do the extra and you add the audio and the transcript, it adds huge value to your program because everyone learns different, right? Yeah. And so, I know that I enjoy, uh, sometimes I don't have time to sit and watch sort of the hour training, but I'm going for a drive somewhere or whatever and I'll listen to it because I wanna get that information. Then when I get back, and I go through if there's a download or yeah. if I want to see a specific piece of information, then I can rewatch the video and just watch that snippet. Yeah. And I like, I prefer transcripts because I I'm a skimmer and I can get a lot of information just from reading. I don't have to read the in-betweens. I understand most things. So I prefer when people don't have transcripts, I get really upset <laughs> because that's how I learned. Like, make me watch the whole video. <laughs> <laughs> and so then the final step in each module, which you have to really think about is um, you really need to have a, some type of workbook or worksheet that the person can download so that they can practice what you just taught them. Right. right. So we have in uh, retail sales or in sales in general, we have a st uh, thing called show me. And that's when you teach people something then you ask them, you say, do you understand? They always nod their heads, yes, right? Nobody ever says, no, I don't understand. They go, yes. So your next natural inclination is show me because that's when you know if they know how to do it. So by giving them a worksheet or a workbook, then they go and do it. If they don't understand it, they have to go back and watch the training because they realize they didn't really learn it, right? right? Makes sense? Any questions on that? Well, let's... <laughs> Let's find out. <laughs> yeah, I know a lot of people get nervous when they think, well, they don't have a list. Um, and that's what um, a few people have said. The technology, I think, always holds people back. But again, it's as simple as creating a keynote or a PowerPoint and narrating and or doing talking head with just no a video. Yeah, just a video. Just do a video of any, um, any way, shape or form. There's multiple ways to do videos. Um, 
And Do you guys remember back in the old days, Tony yeah. Robbins had a program and it was cassettes and they were, it was, what was, oh, was it? A, it was Unleash the Power Within or Awake, I, wake, I can't remember what it was. Anyway, yeah. it was on an infomercial and um, this is how old I am guys, sorry. And you would order these cassettes and there was, I think there was 30, right? There's one for each day. I still remember. And oh, wow. um, that was delivery. There was no other method, right? They, there was no video. There was nothing. It was just his voice. And you would put this in your it's cassette player. Right. So if those of you who aren't interested in video, first of all, you don't need to be a talking head. You can just do the slideshow. But those who don't even want to do that, you can just do, there's still plenty of audio programs out there. Absolutely. People will buy them. And Allison just saying, you know what, you don't know what you don't know. So you've taken some of the fear out of that for her, because I think <clears throat> sometimes it seems very overwhelming yeah. to do an online program, but I know, um, yeah, there's just so many different options that don't have to cost five yeah. arms, a couple of legs and your firstborn child. No, I mean, you really just need to, so the, the biggest one for me that, that will make or break your success is that you need to understand how to teach what you know. Right. So it, you have to be very um, structured in your approach. So you have to walk in understanding that the people you're teaching to know nothing about what you're teaching. That's how you have to think. It's like a baby. So you have to start from the first step. Right. So just like we did today, you guys didn't really know what I was going to talk about, but we started with your just you have a real idea, not with the tech, because the truth is we didn't spend a lot of time on the tech. Right. We talk about tech all the time. We will talk about some some product creation tech stuff tomorrow because it's Tech Tuesday, but um, but in the <laughs> in the meantime, but what I'll say the truth from. is the tech is the easiest part of product creation. It's very true. That that if you don't have your idea down, if you don't know really the transformation that people will get because they bought your program, then you're not going to sell any. It doesn't, you can have the prettiest tech and trust us. We've seen beautiful programs. They're gorgeous, but yeah. there's no information, right? It's fascinating. And that's the piece that, you know, with all different things, whether it's video, whether it's podcasting, whether it's blogging, whether it's business, everyone goes, oh, I want to have all the cool stuff, but the cool yeah. stuff means nothing if you haven't planned it out and your content's not good. Right. You can have really pretty stuff. You can have the prettiest ebook on the planet. Yeah. If there's no, if there's nothing for me to read and it's not a, valuable, I don't care. Pretty doesn't mask no. the fact that you don't have um, information. So Allison's just asking: Is Talking Head better than the slideshow? So, so I uh, know so, you better from seeing you. Um. So Allison, if 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 I had uh, my choice, my best case scenario, what I would do is introduce the module with a talking head. So I would say, "Welcome to module one. I'm really excited that you guys are here today. This is what we're going to learn. We're going to learn these three steps that will help you along your journey. One, two, three. Boom. Moves into slideshow. Why? Because simply um, three reasons. One is that people get to know you. Right. Makes sense. Second is they get comfortable that they can that they start um, almost being thinking that they're seeing you when you're taught when you're narrating over your slides. But three, the most important thing about slides or it will become a movie. But here's the thing. I always leave controls on my videos um, so that people can speed them up if they want or or if they want, they can slow them down or they can pause and stop. Because here's the thing. Some of us talk really fast like me and some people talk really really slow <laughs> I can't, and i can't learn from somebody that talks slow because it's just the way i listen and so if there's not an option to speed up i have a problem so what do i do when there's a slideshow because remember a talking head you can speed up, but you don't know what they're saying because they're still just doing a talking head unless you've put all the captions on. With a slideshow, you can see where you're going because the slides have words on them. <laughs> and you can go to the next slide. I also find uh, people who do the dual, so they'll do talking head with the slideshow. I find that very distracting. Me too. 
So I either like to do one. So I like yeah. the idea of doing the intro. People get to see you move into narration over yeah. slides so that they can get the information and they're focused. Yeah. But they still feel like they get to know you. Yeah. I don't like when their head is in the top or their head. Yeah, is it's, weird. <laughs> it's like, I don't really want to see you all that time. I'm focused on the information. I'm listening to your voice. Um, but if you want to do a full talking head, then the only thing I would suggest is, is caption it. Right. Yes. So remember, there's lots of different little free things that you can do. Remember Clipomatic that I showed you guys on your phones on Tech Tuesday? Yep. Lots of different ways. But what you need to do is not think about yourself. You think you have to always think about what's best for your client, not for you. So just because you're not comfortable with something, it doesn't matter. What we need to think about is what, how can I serve them um, as much as possible with ease so they can be comfortable and learn. And um, so if it means that you have to figure out keynote or something for a while, that's okay. It's worth it. In our product creation course, we actually teach that. We teach you how to narrate everything, but um, there's lots of, there's free. You can go to keynote, you can go to, um, yeah. um, Apple, whatever, and, and just look for keynote tutorials and they'll teach you how to narrate on keynote. It teaches you. You don't have to take a, a course. You don't have to take ours. You can go to a free course. That's how I learned everything. <laughs> yeah, just Google it. <laughs> so, um, so there's no real limitation. So whatever you find the best, you know, I'll, I'll, we, I, there's a course that we just, I, I said, I shared with Stacy a couple of weeks ago, this ebook somebody wrote was better than any full blown course that I'd ever seen on the subject. I mean, the really ebook hard. was just amazing and uh, way better than some $2,000 courses that um, I'd seen, but they delivered it. The reason it was way better was because they delivered it systematically introduction, module one, module two builds on it, module three builds on it. That's the technique. That's what you need to know. If you're all over the map, nobody knows, right? And here's the easiest yeah. way to do it. Just test it on somebody, right? Yeah. Teach them what you're doing. If they don't learn it by the end of your whatever time you spend with them, then you probably need to tweak it a little bit. <laughs> Well, and, and also because I know um, when you plan it out, you go, okay, I'm going to have my eight modules and here's the flow. And you go through it with somebody as soon as they go, oh, I wish I had known that piece first. And you go, oh, you're you right. know, that here. Because it makes what makes sense in your brain, you know the right. information so well, doesn't necessarily make sense when somebody's learning it for the first time. And just so you know, I changed like in when I first um, when I first did product creation in my mastermind, I've changed, I changed it along the way because I used to jump right into things that people were fearful of, which was the tech and stuff. And I realized at the time it was a disservice because they didn't know their ideas really clearly. And so we were, they were all stressed, worrying about their tech. And then, you know, so they got that all down and then we got to their idea and it was terrible because they didn't really work on it. They spent all their time working on tech. So well, like, that's great. Again, you can have a perfect sound and the perfect setup and the perfect delivery. And it can still fail yeah. because the information's not good. And here's the thing, guys. Um, there are lots of people that can put the tech up for you for very low cost. So you don't have to waste your time learning everything. Right. There are people that just, you know, that's what they do. So spend the money on them, whether they charge $50, $100 an hour, and it takes them like four or five hours to do it. Well, let's say they charge $100 an hour, and it takes them five hours to load up your program. That's $500. So they've done everything. They've done your sales pages and everything. That's $500. How long would it have taken you to do it? <laughs> right? And how much is your yeah. time worth? So if you spend that $500 on them, and that's five hours. You could spend that five hours engaging with people, talking to people, direct messaging them, posting so that you can get people into your course. Is it worth it? I think so, because you probably would have taken 25 hours to do the same thing that person would have taken five hours to do. So, you know, remember, it goes down to math, right? It's business <laughs> math again. How much is your Our time? Math. <laughs> um, or maths as Colin would say how much is your time worth right how much is your time worth um, so don't think you um, need to learn the tech there are plenty of, of my clients who don't bother 
They just say, just tell me who to use. And I'm just going to use them because um, my time's way more valuable than trying to figure out how to make uh, my presentation pretty because they just don't know how to. Yeah, it's not. Again, if your information is valuable, I know a lot of times I'll end up kind of closing my eyes if I see I, the slide is just an image. Yeah. Because I just want to focus on what they're saying. Right. And that's the most important thing. So um, that course that you were talking about that's going to be on on point, is it live yet? Is it ready to go? August 10th. It's it'll okay. be it starts August 10th. And the reason we're doing it August 10th, well, the reason we're doing it um, across six weeks is because we're actually going to work so, um, so you're going to do it, do all the work in those steps. And every week we're going to have a coaching call so that, um, the group in, that's in the, in this, the first phase of this one, um, every week you can ask questions, you can share your stuff, you can say what's going on. Um, so in 30 days, your program is going to be ready, <laughs> which is awesome. And then the last two weeks, cause it's a six week program, the last two weeks, we're going to have hot seats and evaluate your, your sales pages and every, the group's gonna help out. They're gonna share um, everybody else's programs and what they're doing. And so hopefully it will really launch you guys further ahead. So for, again, for those of you, it's a, it's 997, the program. Is, there, um, is it on the website yet? I don't see it there. It will be um, this week cause we haven't even told our founders at on point of uh, the date yet they've been waiting why i don't know and i can't find it <laughs> so we'll post it in the group we're going to send out a, a note to the group um tomorrow but you you're welcome to take it um if you are well, an on point because uh she's not yeah. so if you're an on point mentor it is free so um so here's what i would say for those of you who are on point mentors and um yeah are excited and want to do it and they're like okay well i'm just going to wait till august 10th no 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 <laughs> you have a whole month pretty much or three weeks to be able to really flush out your ideas you're going to do that in the course but why not take that opportunity to you know reach out a little bit and say okay what else could i do here so for those of you who are joining us there, cool. Um, for those of you who um, are working at it on your own, again, lots of free information. There's a, um, and everyone you find on product creation will, um, their system is a little different, just so you know, right? Some people jump in and you can tell the difference because if they start with, you know, if they start with tech and that, then they're assuming they're not wrong but they're assuming that you have your ideas and goals already laid out. I just found in my experience that most people need to start from the, um, the very beginning, because uh, again, for me, I, I find it fascinating that, you know, they want to do a program. People want to get online, but they don't know what their goal is. Now and I have, don't have a goal. Goal. sound of music in my head. <laughs> <laughs> the beginning, a very good place to start. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It is true because I know, again, I looked at everything in the beginning. I found out all the different programs <clears throat> and I focused on the wrong parts because then once I had all that figured out, I went, now what? Exactly. And I, didn't, I didn't know my idea. I didn't know the structure. I didn't have all of that uh, information. So very important. I think that's, I've been preaching this for years around planning like it doesn't matter about everything else if you don't have a plan and you don't know what you're going to talk about, then yeah. and the we do is not it doesn't matter. And we're going to have um, for those of you in the course, we're going to um, it's all going to be laid out in a Trello board, mm -hmm. and you can copy the Trello board and you can plug in your own stuff. <laughs> Trello board. <laughs> So, and you know, I mean, it sounds like uh, we own stock in the company. We don't. Um, the reason is just, it doesn't matter what you use. I personally just like it because I find it really easy to lay things out on it, but it keeps you focused, whether it's, you know, a spreadsheet or um, whether it's paper and pen, you need to keep track. So, um, you know, for example, when you're doing modules, you put all those modules in a separate folder or a separate, you know, Trello list. And you will be able to then, you know, when you think of an idea, put it in that list. So even if it's, even if it's not flushed out and you just have a title or you're like, oh, I should include this. Don't leave it in your brain because it's probably never going to come back again. <laughs> and I know people who do sticky notes. Sticky, it doesn't matter. Whatever yeah, you want. 
Exactly. And then they can move things around so that they yeah. know this idea fits under this module and they yeah. plan it out um, with different colors, sticky notes, like you said. Paper yeah. pen. And I think it's all, everything is great. Here's why I push Trello or I push anything online. Okay. Because whenever you have an idea, no matter where you are, you have your phone, you have access. Exactly. Right? So um, the problem with, and, and I listen, don't get me wrong. I love brain dumps and I love sticky notes and I love folders because that's how I started with doing all of that. But it's, there's the limitation is where you are. And sometimes you'll write it in your notes. If you think of an idea on your phone, but then you forget, like you just forget that it's on your notes. Right. Well, there's so, too many things in too many places. Yeah. And I just actually spent uh, the weekend because I had all these things that were in my downloads folder. Mm -hmm. I had downloaded things here. I had downloaded things there. I had written things and they were all in my downloads folder. And now I'm starting to think ahead going, I need this stuff, but I need to be able to find it. You yeah. know, so I took an hour yesterday and I started filing it in different areas so that when I need to go to this topic, I can find it. So that's the other challenge with notes or yeah. notes or notebooks is that your ideas are on 16 different pages and here's, here's the trick that I, I teach on the on the Trello board or on whatever on uh, I don't even remember the name of the other guys now. Do you? That is Mac. Anyways, on the name of those other boards. Um, so it, so all of us download, right? We download stuff that we think that we want to do, right? So if you're doing like we're talking about product creation, so if we're doing product creation, I mean, anytime I see somebody's product creation stuff, I always download their freebie. Always, always, always. Even though I don't need it, I just like to see other people what they're doing. And then what I do, I used to do is file it somewhere in my system. <laughs> I don't know where. So now I have a Trello board that says um, under you know product creation, not not the product, just on like opt-ins and stuff. And I literally attach all those downloads. I upload them right into the board and then I delete them from my computer yeah. so that they're sitting oh, there. Awesome. And now you, now when it, when you go to that, so if you're doing a course on money mindset and you've downloaded 10 different people's things, you throw it right into your board. And then as you, when you're ready to write, you can go through them and then you don't have to worry about where did I put it? Where did it go? I get it. Everyone says their files are good on their computer. Again, if you travel with it everywhere, perfect. <laughs> but in this day and age, um, everything is accessible from any device. So you can log into your friend's device if you want, if, as long as it's somewhere where you can access it. Yeah. Like, and Allison's agreeing with what I just said all over the place and who knows where it is. So <clears throat> keeping your ideas, um, your planning and everything in one spot is ridiculously yeah. helpful yeah how many of you have had ideas and then you go you forgot about them and then three years later you go into your files and you go damn that was a good idea i should have done it i just did that yesterday <laughs> i found something and i went oh that really was a good idea yeah, see <laughs> every so every single person is guilty of it every person because the problem and is is that you don't like mine are now filed and i know where they are and all that stuff but now I have to go back and look yeah. and see which ones are actually right. used. Because I have a file on my computer called Internet Marketing. And under it is every single subject you can think of that's interesting to me. So under speaking, uh, I have a speaking file, but there is like everybody's downloads that I've ever downloaded, right? Now, a lot of times you download and never read it. Yeah. <laughs> so what the process Stacy's talking about, and I've done that, I do that every couple of months, is to go into those and throw out the ones that are really not worth even keeping. And um, here's a little trick. If somebody doesn't name their download, don't even bother keeping it because there's nothing worse than getting yeah. a download without a name. <laughs> or, or they come up with their draft name. Um, <laughs> yeah. A free download version five. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the file name. And I'm like, that's not helpful. No, <laughs> I don't know what that even references. Yeah. So, so any other questions? Because we're coming down to the end of the wire here. Any other questions? Last minute. I know it's a big subject. It is a huge subject, but I wanted to give you the eight buckets, basically, that you really need to focus on when you're doing a program. You guys can all do this. You can all do this. You can all do a downloadable that you can charge for today. 
It's really about taking the time to do it, to get out there and do it and finally go, okay, I'm going to commit. I'm going to move forward. I'm going to get this done, right? And then tomorrow we'll give you two tools that we believe will help you with um, moving forward, whether it's free or whether it's paid. Yes. And see, now trailer would have been a perfect one for tomorrow as well, but trailer is used for everything. So yeah. we just love it so much. Like I can't like, and it's funny cause you go away from it for a while and then you come back and then you realize, why did I go away from it? Cause it's so exactly. awesome because exactly. you try to, you look at these new things coming in and then you realize there, it's kind of like, you know, your, your old dishwasher, your old stove, the one that was made 20 years ago, it never breaks, but the new expensive one <laughs> breaks in six months. What Same is that? Thing. I'm fascinated <laughs> by that. I don't know. Anyway. Okay. All right. So, we are done. So Tech Tuesdays tomorrow and then Friday free for all guys. So Friday free for all is the perfect time to ask us all these questions that are going to now go through your brain today after this little dump we just had. <laughs> exactly. So let your ideas percolate. And I'll have the I'll have the page for you if you guys want to see the product creation course and some of you want to sign up or not with on point. Um, you feel free to take it. And um, yeah, I mean, literally in. 30 days it'll be created and in six weeks you'll be good to go to make money what a concept yeah. and the best thing <laughs> just have to say the best thing is waking up to an email that says somebody has purchased your product oh, it's or awesome. multiple people have purchased. That's, that's so our, that's exciting. it's so exciting especially when you're on vacation or you know and you're yeah. like oh look i'm i'm yeah. working <laughs> <laughs> i just made money what'd you do <laughs> exactly <laughs> i'll buy the drinks <laughs> exactly Thanks for joining us in the city for this episode of Master Talk. If you're ready to make a lasting impression on a global scale, you can learn more at joingia.com. That's J-O-I-N-G-I-A.com. So go there now because the world is waiting for you.